Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're completing our testing of AMD's Ryzen Mobile 4000 APUs with a look at the Ryzen 7 4700U, the last major chip that we need to review from the series. Testing all of AMD's new Zen 2 APUs has been quite a challenge due to laptop availability. These chips launched way back in March, but hopefully you'll still find the information we go through today valuable in your hunt for a new ultra portable laptop. I'll also be totally honest with you guys, on this one there was a serious time crunch to get this video out today, so it's not quite as comprehensive as some of our previous laptop CPU benchmarks. That was due to some changing NDA dates for Nvidia's upcoming GPU launch, but I was still able to get almost everything done, so lots of blue charts to get through. Quick spec recap before some notes on our test configuration. The Ryzen 7 4700U is AMD's mainstream Ryzen 7 processor in their new lineup, and I say mainstream because it's the most widely available chip in this table, along with the Ryzen 5 4500U. We're seeing 8 cores and 8 threads here, so like the 4500U, there's no SMT support, but we do get that increase from 6 to 8 cores. With that comes a small base clock decrease down to 2.0 GHz, but a boost increase up to 4.1 GHz. There's also 8 MB of level 3 cache and 12 MB of total cache on the processor. The CPU cores of course use the Zen 2 architecture and the entire chip is a monolithic die built on TSMC's 7 nanometer node. For the GPU, we do see an increase over the Ryzen 5 4500U in both CU count and clock speed. We're getting 7 compute units in the 4700U, one short of a fully unlocked GPU, plus a 1600MHz maximum clock speed. The Vega architecture is being used here. Sitting either side of the 4700U in this table are the two SMT enabled parts, the 4800U and 4600U, and it'll certainly be interesting to see how 8 cores and 8 threads compares to 6 cores and 12 threads in these mobile processors. The test platform for today's video is the HP ProBook X360 435G7, and yep, that is the real name for this laptop, certainly a very clunky name. However, it is an enterprise focused system, so it comes with a lot of security and management features built in, despite HP choosing not to use AMD's Pro SKUs. This is not the sort of laptop that I would personally buy, and while some aspects to it are quite nice, uh, I'm not going to comment too much on it as a whole. The one change to the system I made for today's testing is swapping out the 16GB of single channel memory that my system shipped with for 16GB of dual channel memory. Same DDR4 3200 spec, not sure why HP ships the laptop with just a single DIMM given it can impact performance, but that has been addressed for this video. Usual test notes also apply here. This means we test all laptops and the APUs with the same power configurations, which gives us as apples to apples numbers as we can achieve. This also allows us to take a more generalized look at how the processes themselves perform, rather than how a specific laptop performs with whatever configuration the OEM decides to ship. Power is, of course, crucial to mobile hardware, as there's usually a hard power limit with these systems to fit everything into the constrained thermal design, so we keep everything here on an equal playing field. With that said, the actual performance you see in the system will depend on how the OEM chooses to configure that laptop. For example, whether they choose a 15 watt or 25 watt long-term limit, and how they configure the boost period. Sometimes you'll see performance faster than we show, sometimes slower, but either way, it's important to keep this in mind. We've tested the 4700U in both 15 watt and 25 watt long-term power configurations. In keeping with most Ryzen laptops we've tested, both configurations have a boost period where power is increased to around 35 watts for up to a few minutes. At 15 watts this boost period is roughly 2 minutes, and at 25 watts it's roughly 5 minutes. Again, not all laptops ship like this, but it's a common configuration and used for all of our testing. All Ryzen laptops have been configured like this, so it gives us really nice power equalized results. We will be focusing on the 15 watt numbers today, but the 25 watt results are also in the charts if you're interested. Let's get into it. Starting with Cinebench R20 as always, and here the Ryzen 7 4700U is impressive like a number of other Ryzen Mobile 4000 APUs we've tested. With 8 cores and 8 threads, the 4700U is almost twice as fast as the quad-core Core i7-1065G7 in this multi-thread workload, and also 60% ahead of the 6-core Core i7-10710U. So there's no doubting the latest Ryzen 7 parts are offering class-leading multi-thread performance by a mile. Single thread performance is also very respectable, coming in slightly faster than the 1065G7. Not a huge margin here by any stretch, but considering where AMD used to be in mobile, matching what Intel has to offer is a good result. However, there are some interesting numbers here. While the 4700U is 20% faster than the 4500U in multi-thread, and 5% faster for single thread, 
the 8-core, eight 8-thread eight design isn't faster than the 6-core, 12-thread Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U, aka Ryzen 5 4600U. We're looking at essentially the same performance. The 4700U does lead for single-thread, but is very slightly slower for multi-thread. On first glance, this might be a bit strange, but the benchmark numbers from AMD's launch event only show a 4% margin between these parts in Cinebench, the smallest margin between any of the Ryzen parts. So I guess from that perspective, it's not that unusual to see a result like this. There's also quite a significant gap to the Ryzen 7 4800U. Adding SMT to the 8-core part, and perhaps with better binning as well, allows the 4800U to be 30% faster in this workload. For reference, adding SMT to the 6-core SKUs improved performance by 22%, so that's just an interesting thing to note. In handbrake, the 4700U is marginally faster than the 4650U, in keeping with what we saw in Cinebench. It seems like the 8-core, eight 8-thread eight design has similar overall efficiency for multi-core workloads relative to the 6-core, 12-thread approach when kept to the same power levels. However, that's just comparing AMD to AMD. The 4700U is 92% faster than the Core i7-1065G7 in this workload, once again showing Ryzen's dominance over Ice Lake for any serious multi-core productivity work. Blender is another interesting workload because the 4700U is still quite a bit faster than Ice Lake here, but the margins do close up relative to other AMD processors. The 4700U is actually slower than the 4650U here, and only 6% ahead of the 4500U. So there is still a performance gap between Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 parts, at least the most common SKUs in that series, but the gap is not as significant as in Handbrake or Cinebench where margins were closer to 20%. The 4700U remains a very powerful processor for code compilation relative to lower tier U-series parts. For GCC compilation, the 4700U is 62% faster than the 1065G7 as it's able to harness its lead in both single-thread and multi-thread processing. We are seeing just an 11% margin compared to the 4500U though, so Ryzen 5 is presenting a lot of value here. Similar results for Chromium compilation as well if you're interested, this is a very long workload to run. For Microsoft Excel performance, this is a situation where the 8-core, eight 8-thread eight design is better than 6 cores with 12 threads. Our number crunching benchmark presents a 25% lead for the 4700U over the 1065G7, but also quite large leads over the 4500U at nearly 30%. Then the 4800U is another step up, and like a lot of workloads we've been showing so far, AMD's top-of-the-line processor is definitely one to look out for with class-leading performance. In PCMark's productivity workload, the Ryzen 7 4700U is a very capable chip that delivers excellent results for tasks that are quite common on a U-series notebook. The 8-core design without SMT is favoured here over the SMT design in an outlier among our testing, leading to around a 10% improvement over other processes you might be considering like the 4500U or Ice Lake. The Essentials workload, which covers app loading and web browsing, again the 4700U is a strong performer, but it's not that much faster than other U-series chips. There's just a few percent either way between most Ryzen APUs and Ice Lake, so right now there isn't much separating Renoir and Intel's 10th gen parts. The 4800U does take a step above these chips, but for a lot of the basic stuff you'll be doing on a laptop, the 4700U is very capable. Ryzen is an absolute beast for decompression, offering a huge performance lead over Intel. However, what we've seen in previous reviews is that AMD's chips really benefit from SMT in this test. The 4800U is 60% faster in this workload with its 16 versus 8 threads, and the 4650U with 12 threads is also a faster chip. With that said, cores are also important, allowing the 4700U to hold a 30% lead over the 4500U. In MATLAB, there's not much separating the 4700U from 4500U. Both deliver very similar performance, and again, the SMT-enabled parts are superior. Because of this, Ice Lake gets a rare win over the 4700U here, although it loses to the 4800U overall. We also see a very small performance lead for Ice Lake in Acrobat PDF to PNG exporting, but in this single-thread workload, margins are tight and quite similar to other single-core tests. The final productivity test I'm looking at today is Adobe Photoshop. Like several other lightly threaded workloads we've been looking at, we don't see huge margins between most U-series processors. The 4700U at 15 watts ended up 5% ahead of the i7-1065G7 and about 12% ahead of the Ryzen 5 4500U. Those are decent gains and definitely a reason to upgrade from a Ryzen 5 to Ryzen 7 part for people that do a lot of image editing on their device. Now time for some gaming benchmarks to see how the extra compute unit and higher clock speeds translate into gains. 
In GTA 5, which also hits the CPU quite hard, there isn't much separating the Ryzen 7 4700U and 4800U, despite the 4800U having the faster GPU. The CPU does appear to be playing a role here, and it delivers strong performance overall. We are seeing small gains on lower tier products like the 4500U and 4650U. In Civilization 6, the 4700U isn't much faster than the 4500U or 4650U at 15 watts. There just isn't a ton of headroom here for this chip to show what it has to offer. But at 25 watts, the taps opened up a bit and the 4700U ends up pulling away with average frame rates about 10% higher than the 6 core models. So while the 4650U, for example, doesn't benefit much in this title from a higher power limit, the 4700U and also 4800U do benefit, so it's worth being on the lookout for laptops that can handle more juice. In CSGO, performance is pretty good, especially at 25 watts, where the Ryzen 7 part is able to average over 100 FPS. We're not quite at the performance levels Isolate can deliver at 25 watts, but overall performance is impressive, and I'd say these sorts of laptops are good enough for light eSports titles at a native 1080p with competitive settings. Gears 5 is a heavily GPU limited game running at medium settings, and so far no integrated GPU is capable of a consistent 30fps experience at these settings. With that said, the 4700U is one of the better APUs here. This chip outperforms Ice Lake at 25 watts with a 37% margin, and narrowly beats the MX250 as well, when paired with the 1065G7. The 4800U is still the faster chip with a fully unlocked Vega design, it's about 16% ahead here, but the 4700U itself is 17% faster than the 4500U, so definitely a good reason to upgrade there when paired with the other advantages of this chip. The 4700U also delivers great performance in F1 2019 with the ultra-low preset for an ultra-portable. The 7 compute unit design stretches its legs here, particularly at 25 watts, delivering 44 FPS on average, which is very playable. When viewing performance summaries, we see a similar story to past Ryzen reviews when comparing the Ryzen 7 4700U to the Core i7-1065G7. In multi-thread workloads, the 8-core design, even without SMT, is able to deliver up to twice the performance, with strong leads in important tasks like 7-zip decompression and code compilation. The 4700U is also competitive in single-thread tests, holding its own for basic productivity tasks and photo editing. It's not a universally faster processor, but when the 4700U is faster, it tends to be a lot faster. There are also plenty of reasons to upgrade your laptop from a 4500U to a 4700U configuration during the purchase process. You can expect 20-30% to better multi-thread performance, which is very good scaling from the addition of two cores in the same power envelope. But the 4700U also has the advantage of higher single core turbo clocks, so single thread applications and basic tasks are faster too. Getting 10% better performance in Photoshop is quite good for moving up a tier. Where things get really interesting is comparing the 4700U to the 4650U. The 8-core 8-thread design does not appear to be more efficient than the 6-core 12-thread model in all workloads. There are times when the 4700U is faster, like in Handbrake and Excel, but other times where the 4650U is faster, like Code Compilation and Blender. The 4700U does have the edge in gaming and lightly threaded tasks due to its higher spec configuration, but it's clear that adding more cores isn't necessarily better than just adding SMT. As for the Ryzen 7 4700U versus 4800U, well it's clear the 4700U is quite a bit slower in most workloads. We're seeing 20-30% worse performance in multi-thread workloads and single digit differences for lightly threaded tasks. The 4800U is a very powerful chip at 15 watts and sits at the top of AMD's product stack for a reason. I think it's also worth showing just how much faster the 4700U is over the Ryzen 7 3700U. The 4700U is twice as fast in a lot of multi-thread workloads, but up to 2.5 times as fast in stuff like Handbrake where the new Zen 2 architecture is a lot better for handling that sort of test. Then for single thread, the 3700U really had terrible performance in that area. The 4700U is 30-40% to faster, which is just crazy. After all this testing, we now have a pretty comprehensive look at AMD's Ryzen Mobile 4000 lineup, spanning both the U and H series. There's a few chips still missing that we haven't tested, like the Ryzen 3 4300U, but we've covered all the big ones. And while I could spend a lot of this conclusion going through how much faster the 4700U is over Intel's 10th gen processors again, 
I feel like I've covered that many times in the past, so I just want to stick to the new and interesting takeaways from this testing. Yeah, the 4700U is much faster for multi-threaded workloads and roughly equal for single thread relative to iSelect, so let's move on. What I was really pleased to see is that there is a decent performance gain between the Ryzen 5 4500U and Ryzen 7 4700U. These are the two most common SKUs on the market and are the two configurations offered for most Ryzen laptops, so the difference between them I'm sure is of interest to a lot of people. Previously, with many Intel generations, there wasn't much separating Core i5 and Core i7 mobile CPUs. With Skylake back in 2015, for example, both i5 and i7 models had two cores and four threads and the same GPU. The difference usually amounted to cache and clock speeds. The Core i7 was a bit higher spec, so you got a small performance upgrade, but certainly nothing amazing. Even today, there is limited segmentation in Intel's lineup. But with Ryzen, the 4700U offers 20% gains over the 4500U in multi-threaded workloads, thanks to the inclusion of two extra cores. That's decent segmentation and gives buyers a legitimate incentive to upgrade. But not only that, you get faster single-thread performance and better GPU performance too, so the overall difference between these chips is significant and does justify the price difference. I think this performance testing also answers the question of why the Ryzen 5 4600U is totally absent in the market. There's not much of a performance difference between it and the 4700U in a lot of workloads. In fact, at times, the 6-core 12-thread configuration is faster. In my opinion, having both the 4600U and 4700U is a bit unnecessary. We really only need one, and OEMs seem to think so as well. Their choice to preference the Ryzen 7 part with its more marketable name and ability to be sold at higher price points also makes sense from their perspective. While the 4600U might have been better value in some instances, I'm pretty comfortable with the value on offer with the 4700U. It's hard to complain about this chip's performance. In fact, anyone that's bought a 4700U device over the last few months it's been available should be pretty happy with what they've received. It's certainly a better choice performance-wise than any Intel Ice Lake or Comet Lake processor, and like I said in my previous Ryzen video, I wouldn't recommend anyone buy a 10th gen Intel laptop at this point. However, we will soon see how Intel's Tiger Lake processors perform, and I expect a pretty fierce battle between Intel and AMD in the months ahead. So while the Ryzen 7 4700U is an excellent buy right now, when Tiger Lake hits the market, that may change, so it's something to keep an eye out for. In particular, I would expect Tiger Lake to make strides forward in GPU and single-thread performance. Then there's also the issue of availability across AMD's entire Ryzen Mobile 4000 lineup. While there are a lot of designs that are using Renoir at the moment, which is great to see, a lot of them have very limited supply, so either they're just completely out of stock or they're on back order for several months. That's because AMD right now is totally maxed out on the supply of their laptop uh, chips. There's been a lot of demand for these processors, apparently a lot more than AMD was expecting, so it may take a few months for that to settle. So again, while the 4700U is a great part and something that I would personally recommend that you buy over 10th gen parts, the availability issue does also impact the ability for you to just go out and buy a Ryzen product right now and may bring Tiger Lake back into contention if those issues aren't sorted before we start to see Tiger Lake hit the market in a serious way. Anyway, that's it for our review of the Ryzen 7 4700U. If you're interested in our laptop testing, you can subscribe to the channel. The next thing that we'll be doing in this regard is probably Tiger Lake testing, hopefully towards maybe the middle of next month, end of next month, not quite sure on that one, but we will be back to go through the Tiger Lake lineup. So well worth signing up for that. We also really appreciate the support of all of our Patreons who make testing like this possible. Uh, you can sign up to that. Links in the description below. You'll get access Access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of thing. Thanks for watching 20% Club, and I'll catch you in the next one.